Ladies and gentlemen, the Collie Wobbles Theater Company presents the play that proves there's a Santa Claus, Miracle on 34th Street. It's Thanksgiving Day in New York City. On 5th Avenue adjoining Central Park, an annual event is being joyfully awaited. The spectacular parade presented by Macy's Department Store to herald in the Christmas season. Certainly is a wonderful parade, Susan. Look, there's Santa Claus and his sleigh. Santa, Mr. Gailey, there's no such thing as Santa Claus. Sure there is, and all of his reindeer. Really, Mr. Gailey, and you, a lawyer. And I agree with my mother, there's no such thing as silly fairy tales and Santa Claus. Come in. Good afternoon, I'm Susan's mother. My maid said... Oh, hello, mother. I'm watching the parade. Mr. Gailey invited me. Hello, darling. Susie's told me quite a lot about you, Mrs. Walker. She's told me quite a lot about you, too, the man in the front apartment. (laughs) Well, this is all part of a plot, Mrs. Walker. I'm very fond of Susie, but I I also wanted to meet you. (laughs) At least you're frank. I um, I hear Susan doesn't believe in Santa Claus. That's right. She never has. Well, that's the end of the parade. Mother, I've been thinking, it's Thanksgiving and there are only two of us. Couldn't we invite Mr. Gailey? Well, I... Oh, uh, please don't bother. I'll I'll just have a sandwich or something. But we have such a big turkey. Please, Mother, please. Well, well, I... uh... Did I ask her all right, Mr. Gailey? Susie, shh. You asked fine, Susan. Dinner's at three, Mr. Gailey. Here he is, Mr. Macy. Here's Santa Claus. Oh, thank you, Alfred. Thank you. Good morning, Santa Claus. Good morning. Now, before you go to the toy department, here's a list of toys that we have to push. Oh? Oh, you know, things we're overstocked on. Now, you'll find a great many of children will be undecided as to what they want for Christmas. Now, when that happens, you immediately suggest one of these items. Do you understand? I certainly do. Fine, that's fine. Now, take the list, and Alfred here will show you to your throne in the toy department. Don't you forget, you're working for Macy's. The new Santa Claus was positively the most sensational Santa Claus who had ever held court on Macy's seventh floor. He was the real article, all right. He had that deep down, genuine Kris Kringle twinkle in his eyes. And if he told you anything, you could depend on it. Electric trains? Why, yes, madam, right over there. Realistic models of the chief and super chief. Now, what about you, little girl? Oh, yes, madam, we have wonderful skates here, but not quite what your little boy seems to want. Now, I suggest you go across the street to Gimbal's. Gimbal's? Oh, yes. I keep track of the toy market quite closely. Does that surprise you? Macy's sending me to another store? Only important thing is to make children happy, isn't it? Now, whether Macy's or somebody else sells the toy doesn't make any difference. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Well, you can get it at the Acme Toy Company. Only eight fifty dollars plus tax. And so it went, and so the customers went. To other stores if Macy's didn't have what they were looking for. The grown-ups began to believe in Santa Claus as much as the children, all except one small child named Susan Walker, who finally came to Kris Kringle with a skeptical look on her small face and a prodding young man at her back. And what would you like for Christmas? Uh... Go ahead, Susan. Tell Santa what you'd like. What's your name, little girl? Susan Walker, and I don't believe in Santa Claus. My mother happens to be Mrs. Walker, the lady who hired you. Your daddy seems to believe in Santa Claus. <laughs> He's not my daddy. My mother and father are divorced. This is Mr. Gailey, who lives in the apartment next to us. I see. He's a lawyer at law. Uh, attorney at law, Susan. He pretends he brought me to see you, but he really came to visit mother. Oh, really? Oh, brother. 
I must say you're the best looking Santa Claus mother ever hired. Why, thank you. Your whiskers aren't glued at the sides. That's because they're real. Just like I'm the real Santa Claus. Oh, now stop. Go ahead, pull them. Pull them? Go ahead. Mm, all right. Ooh, ah, ouch. They're on pretty tight, all right. What's your name? Chris Kringle. That's your stage name. I mean, your real name. Susan. There's Mother now. I'm dead. Seriously, Mr. Gailey, I told you not to bring Susan down here. Uh, look, you, your maid was out sick, and Susan was home Mr. alone. Mr. Gailey, I am bringing up Susan to face reality. In reality, he came to see you. Really? I, uh, um, Mr. Gailey, uh, uh, will you step this way, please? Yes, ma'am. We can talk here, Fred. Now, Doris. I keep telling Susan that Santa Claus is a myth, and you bring her down here to see thousands of children like herself worshipping a very convincing old man with real whiskers. What's she to think? What's she to believe? Whatever makes her happy. Well, I don't want my child growing up to consider life a fairy tale instead of reality, to keep waiting for a Prince Charming to come along, and when he does, he turns out to be someone that they... Someone that they'll have to divorce? I, I'm talking about Susan. In, in fact, I'm going to have to talk to that Santa Claus before he goes to lunch. Alfred said you wanted to see me, Mrs. Walker. Oh, um, uh, oh yes, uh, come in. I just need to take a look at your employment card. Name, Chris Kringle. Address... Brooks Retirement Home, Great Neck, Long Island. Date of birth, as old as my tongue and a little bit older than my teeth. <laughs> Place of birth, North Pole. Now, really. Why, I believe you doubt me, Mrs. Walker. And this tops everything. Next of kin. Oh, that. Dasher, dancer, prancer, and vixen. Have I done something wrong? No, 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 no. It, it's just that we feel... Oh, excuse me. Hello? Mrs. Walker? Yes, Mr. Macy? I've just heard about your new Santa Claus. Yes, Mr. Macy. I was just going into that. Mr. Macy... The idea, the very idea that he's telling people if Macy's doesn't have it to go to Gimbel's. Well, I had... Gimbel's? Directly across the street. Imagine the Macy's Santa Claus sending customers to Gimbel's. Wonderful. Huh? The public response is wonderful. We're getting to be known as the helpful store, the friendly store, the store that places public service ahead of profits, and consequently will make more profit than ever. Yes, sir. Great idea, Mrs. Walker. Great work. Keep it up. Yes, Mr. Macy. And above all, keep that Santa Claus. Keep him, but he... He's great! But, Mr. Macy... Goodbye, Mrs. Walker. Mr. Macy! Mr. Kringle... Yes? Mr. Macy suggests that we try you out a little longer. Well, that's mighty good news, Mrs. Walker. This is quite an opportunity for me. Yes, for the last 50 years or so, I've been getting more and more worried about Christmas. Seems we're all so busy trying to beat the other guy and making things go faster, look shinier, and cost less, that Christmas and I are sort of getting lost in the shuffle. Christmas is still Christmas. Oh, but it isn't just a day, it's a frame of mind. That's what's been changing. That's why I'm glad I'm here. Maybe I can do something about it. I'm glad I met you and your daughter. Thank you. You two are a kind of test case for me. What's a test case? If I can make you and your mother believe in me... Speaking of tests, Mr. Kringle, would you kindly report to Mr. Sawyer's office first thing tomorrow morning? Mr. Sawyer? Yes, he'll give you an examination. Mental examination? Yes, it's just routine. All of our employees are required to take an examination. I don't mind. I've taken dozens of examinations, never failed one yet. I'll see Mr. Sawyer first thing in the morning. Thank you. Goodbye, Mrs. Walker. Bye, Susan. Bye, Mr. Kringle. 
Oh, excuse me, Chris. I was just leaving. Bye bye. Hello, Doris. How are you, Susan? I'm fine. Mother's got problems. Fred, I'm worried about Mr. Kringle. Worried? Why? I think he's mentally unsound. I think he's a fantastic, delightful, and unselfish human being. And if being delightful and unselfish and human is bad, what's good? Mr. Macy likes him, so I have to keep him, but not if he's insane. Oh, nonsense. Well, he thinks he's Santa Claus. Maybe he is. Suppose he gets worse. Suppose he gets violent. Chris? Nevertheless, I'm having Mr. Sawyer question him tomorrow. Only, how can I be sure that Kringle will even show up tomorrow? It's easy. I'll take him home with me tonight and bring him to work in the morning. Oh, would you? All you have to do is marry me. Fred. When I can afford it. Do it, mother. At least have dinner with me tonight with Chris Kringle as my house guest of honor. That evening, Chris Kringle went home with Fred Gailey. And after dinner in Doris Walker's apartment next door, Chris left Fred and Doris to discuss child psychology or uh, something and stole quietly into Susan's bedroom. Susan, that sophisticated child, was in bed, blowing bubblegum bubbles. That was a big one. (laughs) Susan, why don't you give me a chance to prove to you I'm really Santa Claus? There is no Santa Claus. Must be something you want for Christmas. Mother will get me anything I want. Must be something she can't get you. Well... Aha! There is something. I'd like a house. What, do you mean a doll's house? No, a real house to live in. Here's the picture. A real house? If you're really Santa Claus, you can get it for me. If you can't, you're only a nice man in a white beard, like Mother says. Oh, now, now, wait a minute, Susie. What could you possibly do with a big house like this? Live in it with my mother. And I want a great big backyard with a big tree to put a swing on and, and a garden and a... Oh, well, we'll even discuss it. Hmm. Uh, Susie, Susie, could I, could I keep this picture it just, just in case? I guess so. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, Mr. Gailey's waiting for me. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Kringle. Are you ready to turn in, Mr. Kringle? Oh, you're very kind, really. Hmm. Uh, you're you're quite fond of Mrs. Walker, aren't you? <laughs> a lot of good it does me. She lives in a cast iron shell that's just a little difficult to penetrate. Oh well, you must try a little harder, Mister Gailey. You know, Mrs. Walker and that child are a couple of lost souls, and it's up to us to help them. <sighs> oh well, uh, shall I turn out the light? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, You know, all my life I've wondered about it, and now I'm going to find out. Tell me, does Santa Claus sleep with his whiskers outside or inside the covers? Oh, outside, of course. Outside by all means. The cold air makes them grow. The next day, Chris Kringle finished his shift and went up to see Mr. Sawyer. So I changed my clothes, Mr. Sawyer, and came right up. Oh, well, then that's your own beard, huh? Huh? Uh, yes, yes. Why do you carry a cane? Always carry a cane, Mr. Sawyer. I carved this cane out of a runner from one of my old sleighs. What? What? What's that? With a fine, solid silver top. All right, then. Who was the first president of the United States? Oh, give me a difficult one. Like, uh, like who was the vice president under John Quincy Adams? I'm conducting this examination. The answer is Daniel D. Tompkins. Bah. Uh. Hmm. You're a rather nervous man, aren't you, Mr. Sawyer? Bah. Do you get enough sleep? My personal habits are no concern of yours. How many fingers do you see? Three. 
Oh, dear, dear, dear. And you bite your nails, too. That'll be all, Mr. Kringle. This examination's over. Huh. Delighted to hear it. Goodbye, Mr. Sawyer. Later that day, Chris chatted with young Alfred during his break at the store. Hello, Alfred. How about a game of checkers during lunch? Oh, not today, Chris. I... I don't feel so good. Oh? What's the matter, Alfred? Oh, nothing much. You remember how I was telling you how I like to play Santa Claus over at the Y and give out packages to the kids? Yes. Well, I was telling Mr. Sawyer about it, and he says that's very bad. That psychologically it's all wrong. Wrong? To be nice to children? Uh, well, he says guys who play Santa Claus do it because when they was young, they must have done something bad, and now they do something they think is good to make up for it, see? It's what he calls a guilt complex. Excuse me. Hey, ain't you gonna have lunch? Later. Right now, I have an appointment with Mr. Sawyer. What do you mean breaking into my office like this? Are you a licensed psychiatrist? What business is it of yours? I have great respect for psychiatry and great contempt for meddling amateurs who go around practicing it. You ought to be horsewhipped, taking a boy like Alfred and filling him up with complexes and phobias. Just because Alfred wants to be kind to children, you tell him he has a guilt complex. Either you stop analyzing Alfred, or I'll go straight to Mr. Macy and tell him what a contemptible fraud you are. Oh, get out of here! Get out of here before I be thrown out! There's only one way to handle a man like you. Well, well, maybe this will knock some sense into you. Oh, ow, oh, oh, my head! Oh, oh! Good day, Mr. Sawyer. Mrs. Prong, get me the police! Get me Mrs. Walker! Get me the psychopathic ward in Bellevue Hospital! Hello, Chris. Hello, Fred. Chris, I've been speaking to the doctors. They said they've given you tests. Yeah, same old tests. Except this time you failed to pass them. Chris, you deliberately failed them. Why? Because I had great hopes, Fred. I had a feeling Mrs. Walker was beginning to believe in me. And now I discover she was only humoring me all this time. But this wasn't Doris' idea at all. Mr. Sawyer had you sent up here before she even knew about it. But why didn't she come to me and explain things? Because she didn't want to hurt you. Oh, it's not just Mrs. Walker, Fred. Well, now, take Mr. Sawyer. He's contemptible, dishonest, deceitful. Yet he's out there and I'm in here. Well, if that's normal, I don't want it. But you can't just think of yourself, Chris. What happens to you matters to a lot of other people. People like me who believe in what you stand for. And people like... Well, like Susie, who are just beginning to. Chris, you're letting us down. Oh, maybe you're right, Fred. You... Uh, of course you're right. I ought to be ashamed of myself. Let's get out of here. Not so fast, Chris. Getting in here was easy. Getting you out will be a lot harder. Not for you. You're a fine lawyer. <laughs> Perhaps, but... But what? You've been ordered committed to a mental hospital. Oh, I see. However, I've requested a formal hearing, and it's been granted. I see. The issue being, do I jingle the bells, or do the bats run the bell free? Your Honor, the commitment papers being before you, I'd like to call the first witness. Mr. Chris Kringle, will you please take the stand? Delighted to do so, Mr. Mara. Mr. Kringle, this is merely a hearing. You don't have to answer the questions or even testify at all. We have no objection, Your Honor. I'll be glad to answer any questions I can. Thank you, Your Honor. Tell us, sir, what is your true name? Chris Kringle. And where do you live? Isn't that what this hearing will decide? <laughs> Mr. Kringle, 
Do you believe that you are Santa Claus? Of course. Perhaps the witness doesn't understand the question. I understand the question perfectly, Your Honor. In that case, Your Honor, the state rests. In view of the defendant's statement, does counsel for the defendant wish to put in a defense? Your Honor, the entire case against my client boils down to this. Prosecution contends that Kris Kringle is not sane because he believes himself to be Santa Claus. That's true. But if Mr. Kringle is the person he believes himself to be, he would be as sane as we are. Correct. I intend to prove that Mr. Kringle is not insane because he is Santa Claus. In view of Mr. Gailey's statement, I'll have to review the entire background of this case. Courts adjourn until tomorrow morning. Hello? Yes, this is Mr. Mara. Well, can't it wait till tomorrow I'm eating din? What do you think I feel about it? I'll see you tomorrow. Who is that, dear? Those reporters. They make me look like a sadistic monster who likes nothing more than to drown pussycats and tear the wings off butterflies. Quiet, dear. Tommy's still awake. Oh, oh yeah. It a... It'd just break his heart if he knew what his daddy is doing. I'm doing my job as assistant district attorney. Well, I'm not so sure, but that I agree with them. But, uh, Mr. Kringle looks like a very nice old man, and I don't see why you have to keep persecuting him. I'm not persecuting him. I'm prosecuting him. I like the old man, too, but there's nothing I can do about it. I wonder what he's going to pull tomorrow. Now then, Mr. Macy, if you recognize the defendant, please tell us who he is. Chris Kringle, of course. Do you believe him to be of sound mind? Sound mind? <laughs> I wish I had a dozen like him. Now, Mr. Macy, I will turn the questioning over to a person you know, a person with whom I have the deepest confidence and belief, my client and your employee, Mr. Chris Kringle. I don't know what to say. Say it anyhow, Chris. Come on. Well, they say the man who pleads his own case has a fool for a client. But I won't let down anybody who believes in me. Your witness, Chris. Go ahead, Chris. I don't know what to ask you, Mr. Macy. Just ask me anything. How are things at the store? Pretty good, Chris. Sorry I can't be with you. And so are we. How are things with your substitute Santa? Oh, he's just another Santa Claus. No, no, Mr. Macy, you mustn't say that. He isn't just another Santa Claus any more than this Christmas is just another Christmas. It's the same Christmas, timeless and unchanging with the same deeper meaning it always has. It's the same summons to all men to have faith in themselves, in mankind, and in each other. All we have on earth that matters is each other. Christmas is a time for each other, for goodwill and deep respect in all our fellow man. Christmas isn't just once a year, it's always. Your new Santa Claus isn't just another Santa Claus, Mr. Macy, to the purest minds and the most immaculate souls among us. I mean the little children. He is Santa Claus because they believe he is. That's good enough for me, Mr. Macy. That's good enough for me. That's good enough for me too, Chris. Mr. Macy, do you believe I'm Santa Claus? I certainly do. Thank you, Mr. Macy. If your honor please, will Thomas Mara please take the stand? Who, me? No, Thomas Mara Jr., your son. I believe he and his mother are both in court today? Hi, Papa. Uh, hi. <laughs> Tommy, do you believe in Santa Claus? I sure do. Gosh, he gave me a brand new sled last year. And uh, what does Santa Claus look like, Tommy? There he is, sitting right over there. 
Your Honor, I protest. Overruled. Tell me, Tommy, uh, why are you so sure there's a Santa Claus? Because my papa told me so, didn't you, papa? <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. You can go back to your mother now. See you later, papa. You certainly will, Your Honor. Don't forget, Santa Claus, this year I want a football helmet. Don't worry, Tommy, you'll get it. Mr. Kringle, if you don't mind... I'm sorry, sir. Courts adjourn till tomorrow morning. Phew! Now come, Susan dear, finish your supper. But I can't, Mother. All those things they're saying in the newspapers about Mr. Kringle and Mr. Gailey. Susan, they're having this trial because he says he's Santa Claus. But he's so kind and nice and jolly. He's not like anyone else I know. He must be Santa. You know something? I think perhaps you're right. Is Mr. Kringle sad now, Mother? I'm afraid he must be. Then I'll write him a letter. Maybe that'll make him feel better. I'll cheer him up and tell him I believe in him. Your Honor, the state of New York concedes the existence of a Santa Claus. But in so conceding, we demand that Mr. Gailey stop presenting personal opinion as evidence. Well, Mr. Gailey, are you prepared to show that Mr. Kringle is Santa Claus on the basis of unprejudiced authority? Y Your Honor, I... Well, now, wait just a second. The bailiff has handed me this letter in care of this courthouse. It would appear to be for you as it's addressed to Santa Claus. Here, Mr. Kringle. Oh, this letter is from Susan. Dear, Dear Chris, Chris, I don't care what anybody says, even the judge. I believe in you. I know everything will turn out right. I hope you're not sad. Signed, Susan. P.S. I believe in you, too, and in your legal counsel. Signed, Doris. The bailiff also informs me that the post office has forwarded some other mail to this courthouse addressed simply to Santa Claus. Your Honor, where are those other letters? I request that they be entered into evidence. I'm afraid that would be awkward, Mr. Gailey. There are nine truckloads of those letters. Your Honor, the counsel for the state has asked for quantitative proof that my client is Santa Claus. U.S. Postal Laws make it a criminal offense to misdirect mail or intentionally deliver it to the wrong party. Therefore, it is clear the Postal Department itself recognizes this man as Santa Claus. Objection! Order! Objection! Order in the court! Objection. Order, I say order! In view of such overwhelming evidence, this case is dismissed. A few days later, Susan and her mother attended a Christmas celebration at the Brooks Retirement Home. But Susan, darling, you got so many presents. Not the one I wanted, and not the one Mr. Kringle was going to get for me. Well, what was it? It doesn't matter. I knew I wouldn't get it, but I thought he'd at least tell me why. Susie? I'm sorry, Susie. I tried my best, but... You couldn't get it because you're not Santa Claus. Susan! Just a nice old man, like Mother said. But I was wrong when I told you that. You must believe in Mr. Kringle and keep right on doing it. You must have faith in him. But that doesn't make sense, Mother. Faith is believing in things when common sense tells you not to. Huh? Huh? I mean, just because things don't turn out the way you want them the first time... You've still got to believe in people. I found that out. Hello, Doris. Oh, Fred. Mr. Gailey. Gosh, you just got here and we're ready to leave. If you're ready to leave, I'll drive you home. Well, goodbye. I believe, Mr. Kringle. I do. It's silly, I suppose. But I believe... I don't understand it, Fred. This is Ashley Avenue. We've been on Ashley Avenue now for... Stop the car! Stop the car, please! There it is! The house! The house! Susie! What in the world? She's running into that house! 
The sign says for sale. What on earth is that child up to? Mother, it's our house. It's the one I asked him for. Mr. Kringle. Mr. Kringle? Oh, I know it is. Oh, you were right, Mommy. You were right. Susie? Mommy told me that if things didn't turn out just the way you wanted them at first, you've still got to believe. And I kept believing. And you were right, Mommy. Mr. Kringle is Santa Claus. Now, where are you going? In back to see if there is a swing. Oh, there is one. There is one. Who told her that? About believing? Well, you told me, Fred. <gasps> Fred! What's the matter? There, in the corner, by the fireplace. <gasps> oh, no, no. It, it can't be. It, it couldn't. A cane. Chris's cane. Why, there couldn't be two canes like that anywhere in the world. Silver handle and all. Thank you for listening to the Collie Wobbles Theater Company's presentation of Miracle on 34th Street, starring Jason Gressel as Chris Kringle, Steve Ralph as Fred Gailey, Carol Catherine as Doris Walker, Pamela Walker as Susan Walker, Alan Pilly played the narrator and Mr. Macy, Logan Tyler was Mr. Sawyer, Dusty Umphrey as Mr. Mara, Char Wiltrakis as Mrs. Mara, Evan Ralph as Alfred, and Seth Ralph as Tommy. We hope you have a wonderful Christmas.